G'day folks, Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another battle report. So today we're playing the Ninth Age. It's my Saurian Ancients against the Rise of the Ancient... Ma uh, I mean the Rise of the Doom Bull. So he's playing his Beast Herds, which is fantastic. And uh, we're doing a 1750 point Gobacon game. So he won Gobacon this year and will be returning as the reigning champion. He won the tournament last year with his Beast Herds forcing the elven death star out of the folding fortress to win the game and um let's have a crack or well, crack see i don't know we're going to do something we're going to look at some models and see how this game happens so let's take a look at the lists and um i want to just say now my list is fucking shit it is so terrible i feel completely naked i have very little chaff i have just in, in my eyes, compared to how I normally play, just a complete noob list, right? I've got um, two combat blocks, I've got a buffer, and I've got two salamanders. That's pretty much it. Um, and so why am I playing with it? Well, I was sort of trying to, just sort of thinking, well, what do I want to play with? I wasn't really building my list towards the points limit in any way, shape, or form. I just sort of thought, what well, are the things the Soaring Agents that I haven't tried that I want to try? Um, and um, and I'll put those in, I'll add up the points, and I'll just sort of take it from there. So for me, I just go two single salamanders, auto-include, bam, bam, you're in. Thoris Scooters, auto-include, you're in, bam, bam. And then I sort of thought, well, I really want to try what I call the core star, which is basically having using your core troops both as a bunker for your wizard, um, and then also having it, because they're, they're, they're actually quite strong now, Soros, and having it as a... a a quite effective combat unit as well at the same time so I wanted to try with the um, skink high priest level 4 and um, it, it puts you in a bit of a difficult position because he is expensive after you build him up and give him all the stuff and on top of that he's still in like leadership 7 or leadership 6 or leadership 7 or something and even cold-blooded leadership 7 like it's doable but you probably don't want him as your general so that means you need something with a higher leadership to be a general and you also need and your general can't be a BSB so it means you need a, a, a skink high priest a BSB and then a third character to be your general but after you have like a Scarvet BSB for example um, and your skink high priest you've spent quite a lot on heroes so adding the third one in takes a big chunk um, I couldn't really put in like an old blood or whatever else points was just too much so essentially what I did is I ran with a double Scarvet so I've got my list from left to right, we have one Salamander with the Sprout Flames, then we have 30 Saurus Warriors, they have the Fight in Extra Rank Upgrade, they have Spears and Full Command. Uh, in that unit I have a Scarvet, so the Scarvet has, what's he got, he's got a 1-up armor save, re-rollable with the Dust Stone, and then the Sword that gives him plus 1 strength as well. Then next to that I've got a BSB just kitted out to be defensive, so he's got a 2-up armor save and a 4-up ward, that's it. Um, the, Saurian, the, the, the Saurian Warriors also have a banner which gives them immune to fear and terror, which I actually think for the, the points you spend of it on it is a bit of a steal. And then we have the level 4 Law of Light, Skink High Priest with a Dispel Scroll and the Egg of Quetzal. So there's no point, I think, defending him. He's pretty defended in that massive bunker of Spearsaurus with a fight at an extra rank. The two Scarvet bodyguards and, um, you know, but the, the Egg just, I had some points left over. And the Egg lets him bust out. That's a little bit of extra alpha damage if I ever sort of need it. Next to them I have a Thyroscutus with the Solar Beam plus one weapon skill to everything within six inches. And then next to that I have 24 Temple Guard, full command and the banner of XYZ. So the banner of XYZ is the banner of Exocotl or whatever it's called. Um, 35 point banner lets you reroll ones and twos. From this point forward I'm going to call it the banner of XYZ because I just seem to remember that a lot better. Then on the opposite flank we have another Salamander with Sprout Flames. They're very symmetrical deployment. And uh, like I said, I really wanted to try out this idea of the Core Star, and that is that you know normally you take a Slan and then you spend a large chunk of your special as a bunker for your Slan. Um, but with the Skink High Priest, you know you can put him on the Palaquin, you can put him in in Saurus or Skinks or whatever else, and then they get hatred as well, so they get even more powerful. And um, I sort of figured, well, I think it's a nice novel idea to be able to use my core choice 
to actually be effective and, and, and a good choice now as opposed to just a sort of attack. So let's just quickly have a look at the Saurus unit and see what they've got. So there are 30 of them. Um, the two Saurus uh, Sor uh, Scarvets, they displace two. And then the, the what's his name, the Skink High Chief displaces another four. So that means that I get basically another full rank as well. They have spears and they have the fight next to rank rule, which are cumulative. So I'm fighting an extra two ranks. I have lethal strike against fucking monstrous cav and cavalry and all that sort of stuff, which is amazing. I have I have hatred from the skink palaquin, so I'm re-rolling to hit first round of combat, and apart from that, I'm re-rolling once to hit with predatory fighter. I go from weapon skill three to weapon skill four because of the thyroscutus, and then on top of that, I have a scar veteran in there, you know, with four attacks base, re-rolling to hit at strength six. Um, with a one-up re-rollable, and then I have another scar vet with you know four attacks, um, re-rolling hit as well. And oh, sorry, the 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 characters don't get to re-roll to hit, but it doesn't matter. Four attacks, re-rolling ones, you know, weapon skill whatever, uh, strength five, strength six. So those two characters alone put out a, t a ton of hurt. Um, the Saurus are you know base four up armor save, toughness four, weapon skill four, two attacks coming out the front, re-rolling to hit lethal strike against cavalry like it's just a it's just really quite insane like how good just one unit is and then there's 30 of them and so I'm like six or seven ranks deep you know so I'm going to be steadfast for a long long time and it's just a a unit that is a core selection it's a core choice unit and it's so hard to to budge right because you have to throw a ton of shit into it um, you've got the Scarvex to do the high strength damage and to deal with armor um, as well as the spears to deal with, you know, heavily armored cavalry and that sort of shit. Toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, Saurus can, you know, beat most other core choices. Um, and they can even, with all the buffs, they can compete against the, the elite choices as well. So, um, yeah, I, I like to call, call it the core star. It's not quite a death star or anything like that. But I think it's, like, I just think it's a fantastic way to use your core choice. Um, over on the right-hand side, the Temple Guard, well... I sort of just like well, what you know. I need something that's going to the the, the core star can't do everything itself, and I need another option. That option needs to be high strength. I could have used my raptor riders, but I figured for ten raptor riders, you get what like twenty odd temple guard anyway. So um, the temple guard were probably just the better choice, especially with the banner re-rolling ones and twos. They're immune to psychology. They re-roll ones to twos to hit. Their strength five base. Um, you know, they're just a good solid unit as well that can hold their own. Um, they don't need to have the slant or whatever else in there. Um, and they also obviously get the bonus from the Thyra Scooters, takes their weapon skill up, and it just sort of makes a nice symmetrical list as well. So when I sort of built this, this base together, obviously the Core Star and the Temple Guard are the two main combat blocks of the army, and, um, and they're meant to do the heavy lifting, and they can very much work off each other because they're the same speed they're you know the same types of unit essentially um once i'd put that shit in that's it i was at my point 1750 and um it was like well i, I suppose that's it it's i felt naked because i didn't have my chaff my redirectors i mean i've got the two salamanders which we're doing but at the same time i've got two units which i think at 1750 points are hard to move backed up by the law of light to buff them even more it really makes for some uh, insane sort of combat unit. So let's have a look at my opponent's list. Um, this is his a left flank. He has a horde of gore. So the beastman shit got cheaper, um, which means he can take more stuff. But we're not a hundred percent convinced that they got better, if that makes sense. Um, so a lot of the 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 beastmen are still essentially the beastmen, but they're cheaper, so you can take more of the same beastmen with the same weaknesses same strength and weaknesses and there's some sort of little gimmicky things that have been added in but I'm not sure that yeah uh, it, it, we'll wait and see um, because this was just a fun game not so much a tournament game but uh, my opponent wasn't using totems he sort of uh, <coughs> I always show up at his place with my whole list my whole army on a tray in front of him and he says oh doom oh, I'm so underprepared I haven't had time to do anything so I'll just make my list now and I swear to god he's making his list and just looking at my army and writing it up you're such a cheating cunt 
<laughs> arise. No, no, I'm joking. But he basically took something very similar to what he had um, for the, the tournament, but obviously there's no Herdstone or anything like that now, so his magic sucks a lot more, and uh, I'm happy with that. So let's have a look. He's got a Horde of Gore in there. He's got a BSB with Beast Banner. Behind that, he's got a unit of Gargoyles. Gargoyles got cool now. I think they're, they're, they're really a good little unit. Um, and he's got a Pig as well, which also got cheaper. He's got a unit of Best Gore Horde, and in there he's got a level 4 and he's running the law of beasts. He was just sort of, he really didn't have any time to prepare his list or anything. He just sort of said, well, I'll just pick this shit and, uh, and run with it. And then over the opposite side of the table, he's got another pig, and then he's got a Gortac. And let me tell you, the Gortacs are fucking so good now. They are what they should always be, and I strongly recommend running a double Jabberslith Gortac list. <laughs> or a double Gortac Jabberslith list. Um... But uh, let's have a look. So I deployed my whole army first. Uh, I won the roll to go off, and uh, actually he won it, and he let me deploy first. So I just dropped my whole army. Like it was symmetrical. It's a set deployment. It works the same way no matter what. And um, so I just plumped it all down. As such, I won the turn to go first, and not really thinking, I chose to go first before I'd really sussed out the board and what was going on. So that um, building in the middle of the table is far closer to my opponent than it is to me. So it's going to take me um, three turns to get into it. It'll, it'll take him two turns because I can't march into it. I have to normal move. And he can do two. So I sort of figured there's no point me even moving up to the building unless I want to spend the whole game like my temple guard against his best decor duking out in the building like it's just going to be a pain in the ass. And so um, I figured well and then you know, he can bounce out at special angles and get around me and this sort of shit. And also, you know, he's got the big monster that's going to come around my flank if I engage that building. So the best thing for me to do is really just sit back and say, well, if you take the building and you want the building, then have the building. But it's not going to do you any good except tie one of your units up sitting in there. And I'm going to sit back and try and sprout flames and cast magic and make you come to my combat block. So my, my big two core units don't move. And I push my salamanders up, one to the right, one to the left. He's going to have to move forward. They can act as chaffers and hopefully get one or two flame templates down to reduce his numbers before I have to deal with him. Um, we go straight to my opponent's turn. My turn's very, very quick. Nothing really happens. Um, and he moves up like this. And over there, yeah, you can see he's got the little pig is on the other side of the forest, sizing up my salamander. And the pig beats the salamander, by the way. And then the gorgon, George the gorgon, comes out wide and uh, George is freaking scaring me that's just uh, his best of all being one inch away basically one move away from going into that lovely painted building I may add and uh, then we go straight into my turn and what do I do fuck I don't know I don't do a lot but um, no that's just an overview that's just an overview showing what it looks like at the end of turn one with both his forces coming around the building at me um, in his magic phase, he puts Curse of Anra here, or the Curse of the Wildwood, I think it's called, on the Salamander. So I'm dangerous trains on ones and two if I move, and I'm also negative one to hit, which um, is no good. And then, yeah, that's where his turn ends, and we go into my turn. So you can see I have moved <laughs> bugger all, really. Um, all I've done is, let me just get out my handy pen, is I've just angled my temple guard to face this way a little bit and I've just angled my Thoris to go this way a little bit. Thoris good to sit in the middle buffing both units. I'm pretty happy for the, the temple guard to take the um, the Gorgon on head on and I'm pretty happy for the the uh, Saurus to take the, the Goro head on as well. So as long as those best Gore don't sort of jump straight out here in the middle um, I'm pretty okay just to get surrounded and, and take everything that comes at me I've got a fair bit of confidence in the strength of my combat blocks, especially with Law of Light buffs. So I'm just sort of saying, well, you know, I'll sit back here and make you come to me. My Salamander here, um, I've got the option here that if he charges me next turn, which he will, uh, I can either flee. And, and the direction I'll flee, I'll go straight back this way, just clip the edge of the Saurus, pop out the back, and I'll, I'll be just on the board still. Um, but if he fails that charge, 
it means that he's going to be stuck back here somewhere probably and then there's a good odd that you know there's a good chance that i'm going to fail the charge with my saurus and uh, i just don't want to fuck around for too long so if he charges my salamander um i'll probably just hold and i just want you know an easy charge to my saurus because i'm pretty sure my saurus kill that whole unit if i get rid of that unit then i can work on tackling the best gore and have the temple guard um deal with good old gorgon over here who is uh you know He's going to fuck me. You know it is. And this little pig down here. Uh, the, if you've watched my channel for a while, there's one thing that you know I hate the most. It's these little pigs. They always fuck me at the last minute. So, uh, in my magic phase, I get uh, a bunch of buffs off. I get um, uh, I get distracting. Shield of Light, I think it's called. So now he's negative one to hit my salamander. And then I also get lightning reflex. Is it lightning reflexes? Uh, oh no, sorry, he dispelled lightning reflexes, but that's just the lore attribute um, that goes off. So my Salamander's at plus one leadership as well. So he's at minus one to hit me, I'm at plus one in my leadership. Um, they get three attacks in the stomp, like they're not that bad. So if he just rolls not that well, um, I've got my BSB and everything here as well. Like, I'm cold-blooded. Fucking odds are I'm thinking there's a chance my Salamander's going to hold against that whole... Um, horde of gore as long as he doesn't just kill me that is and um, oh, I, I, I couldn't fucking believe this I figured that with my salamander where it was I could place my you know I've got 8 inch range on my temp on my uh, breath weapon I could put it down and then roll d6 and I would like I would just blast it straight through here right hit all of those fucking gore strength 4 toughness 4 I'd probably kill about half of them but you know I, I figured I could probably peel like six of these gore off just with a, a big template I put it down and I rolled a one for the distance it went so I only hit these fuckers at the front and um, it killed one guy like I was so disappointed um, and then yeah we, we go into my opponent's turn and and he charges me and um, it doesn't matter. I've got I've got confidence in my salamanders. I'm I'm like okay, this is fine because I might hold. <laughs> I'm fucking dreaming, but um, I just like to believe the impossible sometimes. Look at those beautiful pen of gore. Look at that lovely banner. Isn't that nice? You can see I'm enjoying my red pen. I've got a beer and a red pen. I'm fucking set. Pardon me. And then over here, um, yeah. So you can see his um, his best gore have moved into the building there. That's fine. And then everything else actually pretty much for the most part gets out of my charge arc so um his little ambush bushes come on board I, and i don't care like these little fucking ungore shooting bastards what are, what are they going to do right i've got a bunch of temple guard and a salamander they can't they can chaff me up or whatever else but the thing i like about the temple guard and and whatever else as well is i just sort of feel that even if i take charges in the flank or the rear especially at cold-blooded and the fact I'll probably still be steadfast like he just doesn't have enough to break me or anything so I don't have to worry too much about getting redirected or changing the angle then then taking flank charges because I feel like I can absorb it and then reform to to deal with it so uh, I'm not really too fussed but he's he's obviously getting around me here and that pig is far too far away um, he moves his harpies up behind um, his gore over here and uh, you know from there they can sort of scoot forward and redirect or do whatever they want to do um, yeah combat and that's one dead salamander I but 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 look at this one two three dead gore up the back so I actually strike first salamanders are initiative four which is insane and um, so I strike first and kill three and then he uh, yeah he, he kills me which is sad but you know whatever um, we go into turn three and I switch to my iPad because my iPhone is just fucking filling up the the storage so quickly I don't know why but um, but I have a tendency of taking a photo with the iPhone and I think it looks nice and clear but then when I put it up on the battery reports it doesn't it looks like a bit blurry and shit um, so the iPad photos probably come out a little bit better. The next time YouTube pays me at all, uh, I'm going to probably buy a better camera. So click on the advertisement links on my video, folks. Just just click the fucking banners and shit. It'll get me more money. I can buy a better better camera. Um, yeah. Anyways, spruiking shameless shameless advertising aside, uh, we go into my turn and I declare a charge. So 
uh, this was a no-brainer. Like I needed a six to to get in here, and um, my opponent sort of thought about it for a while. And we we sort of you know went back and forth, and he said, "Well, <clears throat> I don't think I can beat Dosaurus. No way." And if this was a tournament, I would have fled, uh, which would have meant that the Gore would have gone out the back here. Um, they probably still would have been in range of the um, General, which is here. Um, and so they would have been rallying on like a 9, I think. Which, you know, there's still a good chance they, they could have failed that. So either way, him fleeing is still uh, a win for my Saurus, I think. Because odds are, like, he just might not rally and uh, and be close to running off the board. Um but he normally would have fled if we were playing in the tournament because, you know, he didn't think this was a good option for him. But um, we're, we're not playing a tournament today. We're just having a smash. So let's see what happens. He chooses to hold and uh, the Saurus make it in, which is lovely. I did charge my uh, Thyra Scooters as well, but um, he failed because he is slow. And then uh, over here, yeah, so I just back my, my Temple Guard up and angle him a bit. I just want to keep that... that freaking what do you call it um uh gore-tech or whatever they're called the fucking gorgon in my front arc because you know i don't mind things going to my flank but not him he 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 freaking hurts and i'm conscious as well that he can pop his vesicle out right now and um that i'm going to have double the trouble so uh that's just the rest of the movement there i move my salamander here back um yeah i'm going to get ready to burn him um so we go into this is yeah so magic and these two dice here are just saying i got i got pl uh, lightning reflexes and plus one attack off which is time warp and i also got distracting off so shield of light so he's negative one hit me and i get plus one attack with lightning reflexes so you know it's looking pretty good for me um and then oh here we go this is pretty fantastic shooting we go with a big dirty uh, template from the salamander. Hits every single one of those freaking little shitty fucking ungor cunts. And um, yeah, they're dead and gone. Um, and over here in combat. So uh, I challenge. He's got a BSB in there. And um, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to win this. But I'm not sure that I'm going to break him or whatever else. So getting that beastman bsb is just vital like it's so important once they lose their bsb they they really struggle a lot so um but of course he's got a, ch a champion first i have to go through that to get the the bsb because the bsb is out of combat he's 10 wide i'm six wide i challenge with my general here six accepts with his um champion uh, i attack and do five wounds that's right all hits all wounds and um, that's really fantastic. Then we go into the combat, we resolve the combat. He's striking first, he's a negative one to hit, remember, and he only does four wounds, he only kills four Saurus. That's, um, uh, that's pretty sweet, but my guys, however, kill, I don't know, like a rank and a half or something like that. There's like 10 dead guys, there's 14 dead guys, there's a ton of dead guys, plus the five from the freaking um, general puts him on snake eyes so he automatically breaks and i pursue and run him down and i also make my uh, my charge long enough to take me straight into those gargoyles so that's sweet his bsb is gone already his whole horde of gore is gone already and um and my opponent feels pretty shit right about now um the worst thing of all is that he took had to take a panic test because he's in the building that we looked through the rules we couldn't find anything that said he was immune to panic or anything like that by being in the building so his best accord took a leadership nine uh, panic test no bsb around because i just killed him and they broke and they fucking ran and then so they bounced out the back of the building and that's just sweet right because his only one combat block left is now running and there's no guarantee that he's going to rally he's got no reroll and uh yeah things just got even shittier again for the rise of the ancient i mean for the rise of the doom ball um over here uh what am i even showing so i think i'm just showing what it looks like no we've gone straight into my opponent's turn that's right we've gone into my opponent's turn and he has well he's brought one little pig around the, the side here that was on the other side um he's marched the gorgon outside of my charge arc 
and um, he's got the pig just hanging back and a little bunch of Ungor cunts doing whatever. Um, I don't mind this so much, like he can get out of my charge arc, I'll reform to face him and then he gets a guaranteed charge next turn. Um, but I've still got my Salamander there to redirect, so uh, yeah, I don't mind this too much. And um, over here, yeah, he rallies the, rallies the, what do you call him, rallies the best of gore, and then he works out because he gets a free reform or whatever after he rallies, so he rallies, and then he can sort of swing, pivot them around so that he can be close enough to go into the building the next turn, I think. Um, but then we were sort of talking, saying, well, do we want to just have a building fight for the next three game, three turns? Probably not. And... Um, I could very much just withdraw from here like and not fight him and, and win the game, but um, that's no fun, so we're going to rip it up. So combat happens in his turn, and uh, yeah, the, the Saurus do it again, obviously. The, but the Gargoyles are good. Like The Gargoyles are a cool unit now. I, I could see someone running around with like three units of, of ten Gargoyles, and... Um, Pardon me, and actually doing some damage with them. So, because I've sort of won um, in his phase, I can reform after, or pivot after winning it, and then in my turn next, I think I can make it to the building and sit in the building and just sort of, you know, have him come butt up against me. But uh, that's not the way I play, not today. Going to turn four, and uh, let's just go at it. So, I take the. Um, uh, where's my pen con? I take my uh, Lizardman and I just say, fuck it, let's just do it, right? Let's just have a, a big brawl. Best to go against Saurus. I want to see what this little core star could do. Like, if I can just decimate his core and now I can turn around and if I can beat his best to go as well, um, that'll be, in essence, one unit which is largely consists of my core killing his whole army, which is pretty sweet. Um, over here, the Temple Guard, I'm just an idiot, guys. I'm such an idiot. So, the first thing I do is I move my Salamander in here to redirect the freaking, um, uh, the Gortac. So, we, we, we sort of forgot that he was frenzied, um, but he's frenzied. So, he's going to charge, he has to, he's going to reorientate this way, and then he's going to have to overrun, and he's going to go off the board. That means that next turn he's going to come on, and by then my Temple Guard are going to be miles away. So, I just redirected him. I don't care about the pigs or anything. So, I turn my Temple Guard around, and I march them towards the building. I figured that if I die, um, like with my core star, then you know the temple guard will be able to get in here and finish him off or whatever. But it's the next turn. Like we're in turn four now. Turn five will take me to like here. Turn six, I'll get in the building, and then it's game over. So I don't know why I fucking did this. I should have just gone after the core star or try to charge something else or whatever. But. Um, but I figured, I thought I thought I was smart, I'll redirect the, the, the Gorgon and I'll just march away with my Temple Guard. But well, fucking what for? Because I'm not going to get anywhere in time. But, um, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, isn't it? Um, that's just a, no, I just think I wanted to show his pig and stuff behind there. So that's that. And um, we're going to my opponent's turn and it looks like this. So he charges, I feel sorry for him, he charges his pig into my um, Bastilodon and he says oh what's the toughness on your Bastilodon I'm like oh it's toughness 4 and um, and it wasn't until I realised I got it wrong and he's actually like strength 4 toughness 5 and I thought he was strength 5 toughness 4 or something like that so he got a bit of a surprise when he charged in but I, I, I stood and shoot with my little uh, uh, skinks pew 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 draw some red arrows pew 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 pew, pew. and uh, yeah did a wound to the pig so that's right because the pigs are actually not bad on the charge i reckon he maybe tried to charge me um with his best of gore and failed um and over here you can see yeah the 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 gore-tex gone into the salamander he's going to overrun off the board now and he's pretty much been nullified um we get this is just the magic phase he got uh, Wisson's Wild Form off on his Bestigore, so now they're Strength 5, Toughness 5 Bestigore with great weapons, with hatred, and I sort of fucking not sure if I want to deal with that at all. And then o over here, yeah, um, I'm just going to write this big on the screen, a big giant fucking crush, crush attack. I tell you what guys, if you've got Thyroscutuses, you got to crush. You gotta fucking crush. It's just, it's like one hit, 
Um, if it hits, it's strength 10 with ordnance. It's like you hit them with a cannon, whatever. Um, so he attacks me, he does a wound to me, and then I just crush his freaking little piggy skull, and uh, bacon's on the menu tonight. Go fucking Thoris Scooters. He, Thoris Scooters is a good man. They are, are good. Um, and over here, yeah, Salamander. Like I said, I always have confidence in my Salamanders. I always think they can win, but they can't win against this big daddy. So there we go. He's uh, he's there, and he's uh, off the board. So that's pretty sweet. He's pretty much gone out of the game. And then we start turn five, my turn five. And uh, I just say, fuck it, let's go. Like, I know he's got Wisdom's Wild Form on him, but it's my magic phase as well. I'm hoping I can get a good magic phase off. And if I can get multiple Lore of Light buffs, then you know, this is, is, is not so bad, but um, we didn't come here today to not charge and mess around and whatever else. We came here to roll some dice, take some sculpts, and uh, that's what we're gonna do. Um, my Just Do It uh, fucking Saurus look so miserable and pathetic next to his beautiful beastmen, so I'm gonna have to go back and touch up these Saurus, because I'm looking at them as I'm playing, I'm thinking, oh, they are painted like shit. Um, over here, this is where I realize that, hang on, my Temple Guard aren't going to make it anyway. <laughs> like, they're not going to get anywhere. They're not going to do anything. They're just going to march around. So what's the freaking point, right? So I turn them back around again and um, get them ready for when the Gortak comes back onto the board. Uh, he won't really have anywhere to go, and I'll be able to charge him in turn six, I think and take it from there. I move my Thyrus Scutus over with his side to them so he can buff them, give them plus one weapon skill, and he can also um, he can also threaten that pig and threaten those uh, Ungor as well if I need. Uh, I think I'm gonna throw some little daggers, pew 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 pew, javelins, pew 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 pew, at those guys as well, see what I can do. I'm thinking if I have a spare dice, I'll charge up my uh, laser, I'm a charge of my laser, pew, and hit them as well. Sorry for this drawing guys, I'm just having a bit of fun, you know. Um, and yeah, this was sweet. So I managed to get off, um, what is it? Weapon skill 10 and initiative 10. And I also got off distracting. So he's strength five, toughness five base with hatred. I am, you know, and I want to say as well, I've forgotten to use my hatred rule this whole game. I think maybe even I forget to use it this turn as well. But um, yeah, so, so he's strength five, toughness five with hatred. And he's strength seven, which is nasty. And I am currently weapon skill 10, initiative 10, and distracting. So, but I'm charging so I don't get my spears as well. But it means he's hitting me on sixes with re-rolls. And that's, uh, that's massive, but I'm wounding him on fives. But I've got the Scarvets as well. Um, and over here, yeah, that's just my little javelins. I... I I was just casting my buffs, so I forgot to save one dice to use the laser beam, but um, javelins, throw up javelins and kill one little Ungor bastard. And then over here, yeah, this is what combat looks like. So, um, he challenged me with his his general, which is the wizard. But, but his general's got a 4-up ward, toughness 6, strength 5, and I was just like, well... I, I, if I put my, my general into him, uh, he'll probably just absorb all the damage and I won't get the static combat res from having my general kill the, the rank and file, which I need. Um, so I just fed him my champion. He killed the champion with one wound. He killed three guys and I killed a ton. But most of this, I reckon about eight of those wounds or so were from my generals, my, my, my general, my BSB, and I also blew the egg of Quetzal and rolled you know, like nine strength five hits, which killed a heap so that's good sorry folks so yeah so i i busted the egg of kuatl or whatever it's called off and did uh, like a ton of wounds with that the scar vets did a ton more wounds and uh, apart from that my saurus actually did i mean they did fuck all wounds obviously i charge he's toughness five as well i'm strength four and um yeah didn't do much but i did win this by a ton and he breaks and i didn't catch him oh my god i wish i had caught him that would have been awesome but um no, I didn't, so he's depleted, and he's running, and uh, fingers crossed he doesn't rally. Look at this beautiful dead dog here. Let me let me get my pen back. Every time I pause, I lose my pen. 
Look at that sort of shit. Like, that's just lovely on his terrain. Beautiful terrain, Rise. Thank you very much for making a nice table. And then um, this is just what the board looks like at the start of the next turn so and after his movement so the Gortak has come back on the board and uh, it's just saying well let's do it Temple Guard let's have some fun the pig sort of sets up there where he can uh, basically guarantee a flank charge and he wants to get nice and close to where you know he just can't do anything but he hasn't quite seen or he wasn't looking for it because or he doesn't care but um, his pig is still in my Thyra Scudis's charge arc so that's lovely and then his 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 general's unit um rallies and turns around to face me so oh fuck you know i don't have my egg this time and um there's no guarantee i'm going to get another good magic phase so uh i mean i'm no who cares right i'm gonna i've been smashing him all game so i'll keep smashing him no doubt um but in his magic phase he gets winston's wild form off um and then he gets Frenzy as well. So I think now he's like at two attacks coming out the front with Hatred at strength seven. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I, I don't want to fight that. Like, I just don't want to fight that. That's going to hurt me a lot. Um, turn six. And um, yeah, so Temple Guard go into the Gortak. And the, what do you call it, Thyrus Scutus charges around into the pig. So I like charged around, 90 degree turn straight in, contacted him, closed the door as much as I could, stopped by the temple guard, so he had to close the door the rest of the way towards me. Um, I'm pretty confident over here. I'm, I'm actually not so confident, because I'm just thinking, well, I'm hitting him on, wounding him on fives. So I've got 12 attacks, I think, coming out of these these front guys, 13 attacks. I'm hitting him on fours as well, re-rolling ones, and then I'm wounding him on fives. So I should be able to do a handful of wounds, but he's going to do more than that, and then he's got his Thunderstomp as well, but I should be steadfast, so I should stick, and I should just be able to grind him down. That's what I'm thinking anyway. And over here, I sort of, um, I decided that I wasn't going to take him on. Yeah, I sort of thought, fuck that, like, because I can buff myself in my turn um, once my magic phase has happened, and then have it in his next turn when he charges me. So if I was to charge him now, not knowing my magic phase or not knowing my buffs, I could charge into him complete him him who is buffed, fluff my magic phase, get nothing, and just lose my whole unit. So I think it's better off if I just park myself an inch away from him, see how the magic phase goes, you know, buff myself up if I can, and then he's only got one turn then to break me. And even if he charges me on his turn, turn six, um, he might beat me, but I might be cold-blooded or steadfast as well, I might still stick. So I wanted to fight him, but I figured this was the safest way to fight him without sort of running away. And um, yeah, over here straight in combat, and guess what happened? My magic phase, I got no buffs off at all, like absolutely nothing. So I'm terrified now. Um, my my core star with heaps of points are just over there, ready to face a charge from Bestigore, and um, that's my core against his you know, elite, which is not good. Um, and then I made a mistake over here. This is such a newbie rookie mistake. So I chose to fight with the Thyra Scudis first. I used my crush attack. Yeah. Anyway, I killed this fucking pig again with a big dirty crush attack. And then um, I overran for some reason. I can't even think why, like in hindsight, there's no reason for me to even do this. I think it was just like the end of the night, end of the game, had a few beers, and I was like, nah, if I could, I just crushed him. I'll just I'll just keep going. Like, rah. And um, no, I'm lying. I, I charged him, I crushed him, I beat him, he broke, he ran, I pursued him, uh, I caught him, I killed the pig, and the Thyroscutus ran off the freaking board. And this is really shitty because I should have fought the Temple Guard first. If I had a fought with the Temple Guard first, they would have had plus one weapon skill from being within six inches of the Thyra Scutus, and then that would have helped me against the Gortak, because he would have been hitting me on fours, I'd be hitting him on threes, and then I could have resolved Thyra Scutus, but I did it in the wrong order. Thyra Scutus ran off the board, and um, I lost my plus one to my weapon skills, so, um, fuck. Um, and over here, look at, oh my god, they wrote a song about this called Let the Bodies Hit the Floor. I couldn't believe it. I did one wound to him, which is, yeah, yeah whatever, 
and he did six, seven, eight wounds. Like he just absolutely crushed me, man. These guys get so many attacks. They've got hatred as well. They've got freaking frenzy. They're strength six, toughness six. They've got thunderstorm. If they do wounds, they heal up as well. Like, wow, they're 200 points. They're really, really good. I, I'll just be taking these and forcing them down my opponent's throat. Just get them straight into combat and just wrecking face. And um, yeah, so good. So now, oh, sorry. So now I'm thinking to myself like. I can lose this. Oh my god. I don't know if I'll be able to kill this Gore-Tec. If he rolls well, he can break my Steadfast because he counts as a rank. And he's beating, he's winning these combats. Or I might just fail. I'm on a, a, a Leadership 8 Cold-Blooded. You can still fail that. So I could fail here. He could pick up all my Temple Guard. And on the other side, I'm unbuffed about to receive this buff from the, the Bestigore. So if he gets the buffs off on his Bestigore or charges me, he could kill both my units in the last turn of the game and just absolutely oh, man. me. Oh man, and he charges, yeah, he certainly charges, and uh, this is it folks, um, those, that two wounds on the back, I did miscast a, uh, a spell last turn, and um, doesn't matter though, yeah, so this is, oh, this is scary, and, uh, and this is scary, and this is what I mean, like, it's these two, I've got two fights, I'm losing with my Temple Guard against the Gore-Tec, so I could just, even though I'm steadfast, I've got no reroll or anything, so odds are, I could lose my Temple Guard, in that other fight, I can easily lose that as well. So I've gone from like kicking his ass the whole game to being on, you know, a bee's dick away from defeat. Um, once again, oh, so I did two wounds to him. He already had one on him, which he healed it back. So he attacked first, kills like a couple of guys. Um, then I attacked, I did two wounds to him. He, he did four wounds, I did two wounds. I have a rank a standard and musician I actually won this by like one point he's stubborn or whatever so he stuck but uh, so I actually won this which was nice but one I can't have one more round of combat with him he's going to heal his wounds back he's going to attack first he's going to break my steadfast like he's going to kill me um, if this battle went for any longer the Gore-Tec would kill an entire unit of 24 Temple Guard solo and probably be on close to full health after he did it so um, if you're a Beastman player uh, take your Gorgons. Get your Gorgons out, dust them off, go buy them, whatever, put them on the table, and just fucking stomp shit to death because they are strong. Uh, but as such, I remain, my, I retain my points, and uh, and that's good. And then over here, oh, this was close. This was so close. So what have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got eleven dead guys. He's got. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He's got 10 dead guys, but I have like an extra rank than him. I have a BSB as well. And, um, uh, yeah, so I, I won this by like a couple of points or something. He didn't get any buffs off in the magic phase, so it was his best to gore with his general unbuffed against my Saurus and my general and stuff unbuffed as well he challenged with his um, general again and I accepted with my general this time because I sort of figured you know stuff it let's just do it um, maybe I did do a wound against his uh, his best girl I'm not sure but I bet I get against his general in that fight but he certainly did a wound to me yeah he did a wound to me I did a wound to him um, but this was so close and it was just basically I think because I had an extra rank and I had the BSB as well um, that won me this combat so uh, I won but he stuck and that's where the game ended so uh, that was a good fun game like obviously it wasn't very strategic and it wasn't like fucking a master tactical tournament game or whatever else but you sort of get to a point where you don't need to play like that all the time because if you're playing in a tournament, you know what you would do. You say, well, I'll just flee this, but we're having fun. We're playing Warhammer, so let's just stand and fight, right? Let's see what happens. Um, I think, you know, there's no point in always playing super gamey. And as well with that building, like, one of us sort of just sat in the building all day long, swapped units out, like, we would have done all that sort of shit. So, um, but this was good fun. I, I, The Core Star is good, guys. Like, I have to say, the Saurus Star with with spears fight an extra rank a light buffer or you could do it with a, a law of life light or life either one of those would be would be fantastic um you know add in your scar vets for a little bit more 
extra punching power. Uh, you've got a lot of points tied up in that, so chuck your BSB in there as well. And uh, obviously, as you've seen this game, they've been able to take out, they've been basically able to take on his whole army. Um, and then it's just been my one unit of Temple Guard, which couldn't even fight their way past the Gorgon. But I don't blame them, because the Gorgons are awesome. So really fun to play against Rise of the Doom Bull again. Um, you know, as I've said in other videos, he's lost his hobby mo mojo to a certain extent. Um, but hopefully we'll get a few more practice gains in before Gobicon. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.